Joining us now, David Nixon, to discuss that very topic. David, one, welcome back to the show. Two, how many surefire wins do you have BYU football with when you look at the 2015 schedule? Surefire. That is an aggressive phrase, but uh, I'm going with I'm going with five. Ooh, five surefire nice. wins. Welcome, brother. Who who day? <laughs> Who, who they is, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going with UConn at home. They're still searching for their quarterback. They lost Jeremy Davis, so there's one. East Carolina, they also have a quarterback situation. They have, you know, no OC, or the new OC, I should say. Um, that's two. Um, I think Cincinnati here at home is going to be tough. They return Gunner Keel and a lot of his weapons, so I, I'm not counting them in, but I'm counting Wagner, three. What? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a sleeper. Uh, San Jose State, four. Um, and then Fresno State, five. I mean, I can't remember the last time we looked at a schedule and said BYU only has five surefire wins. I mean, usually you can sit there and say, oh, it's going to at least an eight and something season. But this year, I mean, with, with how it depends, continues to play out, you've got some big names and, and, and big teams on here. And the fact that we can only count four to five is, uh, is, is pretty remarkable. There's high risk, high reward for sure. And it's exciting. And it's especially exciting now. But it's interesting that this season, David, comes on the heels of three straight eight-win seasons. What's the number, that B- the minimum win number that BYU needs to reach to where you go, okay, that was good enough? Uh, good enough? I mean, I, I remember when I was playing there, we wanted a double-digit win season every year. So that, that was 10, and, and that was, there was there, no exception to that. Um, and we did. We went 11-2, 11-2, 10-3. Um, but for some reason, you're right. As of recently, the last few years, they've, they've kind of hit a little uh, bump in the road. Um, but uh, with the schedule to how it's playing out this year, I, I, I think an eight to nine win season is actually a, a successful season, to be honest. Um, and you got to remember that the, the big guns that BYU's playing are all on the road. And I think if you look at 16, 17, 18 down the road, when a lot of these guys come to, to Provo, and we've seen how BYU does with, with schools. We saw with Texas a few years ago when they came to Provo. Um, you know, BYU plays much better at home, uh, which they obviously should. But I, I think, you know, that, that percentage will go up. But when you're playing at Nebraska, at Michigan, um, you know, a neutral site Missouri, but basically at Missouri, uh, you know, you've got some tough opponents on the road. Um, and uh, so that, that's not helping your case. Is it good that BYU is challenging itself? Because it may, co- it may be at the cost of wins in some year. Like, eight might become the new ten, David. Uh, it, it's true. And as, I was going to say, I, I'd rather have an eight-win season and play these type of caliber teams than have a ten-win season and be playing Wyoming's in New Mexico. Amen, brother. Amen. Um, it's way more and exciting. I, and, and, you know, obviously winning is what it's all about, but – it is. It's so much more exciting. And, and, and for BYU fans to wake up on a Saturday and know that we're playing Nebraska this week instead of waking up and saying we're playing, you know, UNLV. I mean, it's and for the players, too. I guarantee for the players this is much more exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to have these type of teams on the, on the schedule. So, I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 a, uh, it's, it's one up for debate on, on what you consider a successful season. But I think with the schedule and, and, and the road games BYU has this year, I think an 8-4 season is, uh, is a great season. Correct me if I'm wrong, David, but in 2006, there was a legitimate shot that a very good BYU team with John Beck as the starting quarterback could have started 1-3 and three against a tough schedule. You started 1-2, and two, but then you got a big win at a ranked TCU team. What's the morale for a BYU team – starting one and two, which could very likely happen this September. You know, it's a, it's a different approach in the fact that in the Mount West Conference days, even though you start one and two, we lost to Arizona and Boston College, we still knew that we had Mount West Conference coming up and that we could make a run and we could win the conference, get our rings, get the championship, you know, get everything. Whereas, and it's true, this, this independence is a different beast in the fact that if you do lose a few games, it's interesting. It starts getting your heads because you don't have that conference to really shoot for throughout the rest of the season. Now you're really just playing for pride. Um, and so there's different motivations there, and that's why you have hopefully a great uh, coach and, you know, the coaching staff and, and a great head coach that can motivate the guys that if they do drop one at Nebraska um, or UCLA, then uh, they, the guys can still rally around and say, hey, we still got a, something to look forward to the rest of the season. But, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just a different mentality. But, you know, looking at the schedule in September, definitely no cakewalk. I mean, you're going to have back-to-back-to-back hard games. I mean, there's really not an easy game in that entire month of September. And how do you see it shaking out? You know, I, I think BYU stands a good chance in Nebraska. Uh, you know, it's always tough when you're facing a new head coach at a new school uh, because you don't have film on them. Uh, 
and, and you're kind of preparing against the unknown with Mike Riley there now in Nebraska. Um, but, uh, you know, always the first game of the year, it's tough to prepare for, for Taysom, um, you know, coming off, coming into the first game of the season for, for the opposing team. So I, I like the OU's chances there, to be honest. Uh, Boise State's going to be tough. I mean, everyone's projecting them to go to one of the New Year's uh, Day Bowl games, um, and they, they return quite a few playmakers. Obviously, quarterback's still a question, running back, um, but they, they've got all their receivers, tight ends, et cetera. Um, UCLA, they're looking for a quarterback, but it's down at the Rose Bowl. Um, that, that, we'll see how that plays out. And then Michigan with Jim Harbaugh, you know he'll have his troops ready. So it's a, it's a tough September. But listen, this is what this is what all BYU fans, I think this is what they want. This is what I want as a fan and as a former player. You want to be playing against the best schools on the best uh, on on their on their fields, on our fields, and on the biggest stage. And this is exactly what's how it's playing out. And it's exciting. Granted, it's tough back to back to back games, but this is what you get with, with independence. You've got to you've got to prepare your guys for this type of schedule. In the Mountain West, yeah, you could take off a week or two when you're playing UNLV. And you, you knew coming up on it, look, we can you know, we can nurse some guys and this guy may may only have to play a half we or so. We can mail it in. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> David Nixon says they mailed it in. No, in I never said that. In the Mountain never, West. Never, never said that. But you could, you could, you could know that, that hey, these guys can get certain rest or not. But with, with this schedule and, and the way it's playing out, there's, there's no cakewalk, really. How many wins in September? You have to pick a number. I'm saying uh, we go uh, two and two in September. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it right now. And I'll, 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 take, I'll take, yeah, I'll take 500 in September. Yes, because those are, okay, you get two quality wins there. And yeah. I think the expectation is that BYU is going to win one of those four. So if they win two, to me, that's pretty good. I want to go back to something you mentioned. Um, the, it, it, it's really for BYU fans at this point with these loaded schedules. It's about enjoying the journey more than it is the end. Boise State is a team that I think enjoyed the fact of how the season ended more than during the year. I think they got bored in the whack. I think they get bored a little bit with, okay, what are we going to do at the end? we got to win this big game, right? And that's a huge deal. BYU's, BYU could be in that position. It, it could be a special season at some point. And that's why you load up because what if you do win? But most of the time, it's probably going to be in the 7-9 to nine range given the toughness of these games. So 2009 versus Oklahoma – type moments become bigger. Like if BYU wins at Nebraska, the hype is going to be probably too much. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. And, and, there wasn't and a we, single question in that whole round. Well, <laughs> well I'll, I'll, just, I'll just add to that in the sense that, I mean, you look back to last year with, with BYU making the run until Taysom got injured, there was a ton of hype, you know, and, and it's because BYU is playing at Texas. And we go down there, what we did down there at Texas, and uh, you know, BYU is going off on a hot start. So it is. It's, it's more it's – more, because it really, for fans, you're right, you're not vying for a championship. You're not hoping that, you know, um, Missouri loses because it's going to help us you jump to first place in the conference. I mean, it's just not how it is. It's a different, it's a different era of football right now with, this, with the independence. So you have to have a different mindset with that. And, and that is, like you said, is enjoying the journey um, and each week looking at a different opponent from a different part of the country um, and, and playing teams that we really haven't really played in the past. I mean, yeah, we played them once or twice, but it's fun now you're seeing these guys pop up, whereas in the past we were playing these, these WAC or Mountain West Conference teams every year, year in, year out and you maybe get one or two games against guys that you play you know, once a decade. And so it, it is. It's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. Um, but once again, it's, it's just different. And I think that's what good fans have to wrap their heads around. And is, yeah, if you do lose one or two, just enjoy the rest of the games. Don't, don't get wrapped up in, okay, well, we're not going to win a championship. Well, of course not. Um, it, but it, it is it, the, the fact that you're playing these teams on these stages, playing Missouri late in the season, um, I mean, these are, these are awesome opportunities. David Nixon, former NFL and BYU linebacker with us on BYU Sports Nation. He brings his talents now to the analyst table. He never uh, mails it in here. On BYU Sports Nation. Never. And after further <laughs> review. Okay, David, uh, Boise State is the headline of BYU's home schedule this year. They'll probably be ranked in week two when they come to Provo. Cincinnati also on that schedule. That's a, that's a good game. East Carolina is an interesting game. But can BYU lose a home game? on a schedule that includes no P5s on the home slate and still reach its goals? You know, I think they can afford to, to possibly lose that Boise State game, but I, I, from there on out, I don't think you can. I, with, with BYU, and I look towards my three years, I didn't lose a home game for three years. We wow. Went, we went undefeated at home in 06, 07, and 08. The Nixon and, effect. 
and and not necessarily, but that was that was something that Coach Midhoff really preached. I remember we'd go hike the Y, um, and, or we really we actually run the Y because that was our conditioning test. And we get up there, and and he'd point down to our our home field and say, "Look, that that's our place. Look at look around you. This is this is ours, and we got to protect it." And I think we really took it to heart, and that was something that when we stepped on that field every Saturday our, at our home stadium, we said, "Look, this this is one place." We have to secure, and we we can't we can't let a game get away from us. And uh, you know, that's something that these guys have to get back in them. And, and obviously, I think they are. I mean, they've just had some tough breaks as of recently, the last few years, um, with with uh, with injuries, or whatever it may be. But um, I, as far as as far as to be a successful season, I think you know Boise State could be possibly one that because I think Boise State will go on to have a you know top 15 year with with the weapons they still have returning um, if their quarterback situation can play out like they needed to. But other than that. I mean, if you lose Fresno State at home or, or um, you know, East, East Carolina, East Carolina, Cincinnati's gonna be a really tough game. I think that's what BYU fans have look forward to after Boise State, the next home game, really Cincinnati. Um, even though East Carolina, like you mentioned, uh, Spencer is a compelling game, but um, you know those back-to-back games are, are pretty interesting. But I agree. I, I think I think you have to go almost undefeated here at home to to make it uh, you know a season that, that that all these players want. Dave, great to have you back on the show, man. It was uh, the Keel effect then. We will give you – stop, Jerem. We will give you – in fact, I'm going to give you some, uh, some fodder to think about as you depart our show once again, and that is, in independence, Bronco Mendenhall, 16-0 and against non-P5 opponents at home. There it is. When he's the defensive coordinator. So I, I exclude last year when he was not in charge. BYU lost two games at home to non-P5s. But when he's in charge, in independence, 16-0. and so take that for what you will. Well, that's what we didn't talk about. And my my leaving note is BYU fans get a, get a, get ready for a defensive showdown this year. I think BYU and Bronco Menhall with him at the helm now, it's going to be a whole different ball game, which gets me even more excited. Let's go! 121 days away, David. Great to talk to you, man. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.